In Abraham Lincoln's papers, we have dozens and dozens of fragments, uh, notes that he wrote to himself. We don't always know what they were for, but usually they seem to be drafts of speeches. One of the most interesting is something that we call notes for a law lecture. The editors of Lincoln's Collected Works have dated this in July of 1850, but the truth is we don't really know when it was created. That period is right in the middle of the period when Lincoln was working hardest as a lawyer. He later said he was focused on the law most assiduously. Um, but what is interesting about these notes are that they represent a series of advices, uh, advice that Lincoln is offering to young aspiring attorneys, and it applies to anybody really in the way that he describes work and what it means. And so a close reading of these notes offers a, a, a whole set of tips for the lifelong learner. Lincoln begins in this fragment by writing, I am not an accomplished lawyer, although he was. I find quite as much material for a lecture in those points wherein I have failed as in those wherein I have been moderately successful. The leading role for the lawyer as for the man of every other calling is diligence. Diligence meaning hard work and a sense of responsibility. Lincoln writes, leave nothing for tomorrow which can be done today. That's great advice for anybody. Never let your correspondence fall behind. Lincoln did not have access to email, but he took mail very seriously. Whatever piece of business you have in hand before stopping, do all the labor pertaining to it, which can then be done. Now I should say, Lincoln was not a superman. And within his papers, we also have notes where he apologized for not getting things done promptly. And so um, even though he offered this advice, he sometimes didn't live up to it. Extemporaneous speaking should be practiced and cultivated. Extemporaneous is a key word here. Uh, it means off the cuff or impromptu or without rehearsal. Uh, although it's interesting, Lincoln hated to be forced into an extemporaneous speaking opportunity. He liked to rehearse and prepare his speeches. He said though in this note that it is the lawyer's avenue to the, to the public. However able and faithful he may be in other respects, People are slow to bring him business if he cannot make a speech. But then he adds, and yet there is not a more fatal error to young lawyers than relying too much on speech making. Right there, that balance for me represents one of Lincoln's greatest talents, which is that he was so good and, and determined to be good on the stump, but he was also very committed to the other behind the scenes aspects of his work, whether it was as a lawyer or as a politician. Very few people are good at both. He was. If anyone, upon his rare powers of speaking, shall claim an exemption from the drudgery of the law, his case is a failure in advance. This is uh, an interesting insight. Those of you who are working in a field, whether as a student or as a professional, know that if you don't like to do the drudgery of whatever it is you're involved in, then you're not really devoted to that endeavor. Lincoln believes that people have to be both Show horses and workhorses. He also writes, discourage litigation. Persuade your neighbors to compromise whenever you can. Litigation meaning uh, lawsuits in court, meaning suits between parties in the judicial courts. Point out to them how the nominal winner is often the real loser in fees, expenses, and waste of time. This is not the way some people imagine lawyers operate, but this is how Lincoln says they should. As a peacemaker, the lawyer has a superior opportunity of being a good man. There will still be business enough, he writes. Never stir up litigation, he adds, getting even more emphatic. A worse man can scarcely be found than one who does this. Who can be more nearly a fiend than he who habitually overhauls the register of deeds in search of defects in titles? He's referring now to the local county office where, uh, law, where titles to land claims were producing the greatest number of lawsuits in 19th century states like Illinois. A moral tone ought to be infused into the profession which should drive such men out of it. But he does note in a very practical way that the matter of fees is important, far beyond the mere question of bread and butter involved. Properly attended to, fuller justice is done to both lawyer and client. He says an exorbitant fee, meaning an excessive fee, should never be claimed. As a general rule, he also adds, never take your whole fee in advance and never any more than a small retainer, a retainer meaning a payment up front. When fully paid beforehand, you are more than a common mortal if you can feel the same interest in this case, as if something was still in prospect for you, as well as for your client. 
Think about how practical that advice is. And when you lack interest in the case, the job will very likely lack skill and diligence in the performance. Settle the amount of fee and take a note in advance. He's telling people to write down obligations, contracts. Then you will feel that you are working for something and you're sure to do your work faithfully and well. Never sell a fee note, meaning trade, at least not before consideration and service is performed. It leads to negligence, meaning poor performance and dishonesty. Negligence by losing interest in the case and dishonesty in refusing to refund when you have allowed the consideration to fail. And then the last part of this note is very uh, revealing because it shows how precise and logical Lincoln's mind worked. He says there is a vague popular belief that lawyers are necessarily dishonest. The word vague here is very important. I say vague, he writes, because when we consider to what extent confidence and honors are reposed in and conferred upon lawyers by the people, it appears improbable that their impression of dishonesty is very distinct and vivid, and yet the impression is common, almost universal. He doesn't like that impression. Let no man, let no young man choosing the law for a calling for a moment yield to the popular belief. Resolve to be honest at all events, he writes. This is honest Abe at his best. And if in your own judgment you cannot be an honest lawyer, resolve to be honest without being a lawyer. Choose some other occupation rather than the one in the choosing of which you do in advance consent to be a knave or a fool or someone who's disreputable. Abraham Lincoln uh, was a man of integrity. He believed in honesty and tried to live up to it. There were moments when he slipped. He did make mistakes. He didn't always live up to every element of this advice. But I think he was sincere in offering it. 